today I want to talk with you about urban development. Particularly, I want to talk with you about urban models. In this video, our focus is going to be the Burgess model. Ernest Burgess was a geographer who studied the growth and expansion of American cities. And in 1925, he developed a model explaining how cities expand from the center. His model suggests that the center of a city, the central business district, exists and that it is full of industries. Consequently, the CBD will be kind of dirty and will attract workers that do dirty industry type jobs. Important to note that in 1925, cities were productive centers of economic growth like they are today. So people who lived around the city center were the working class, and they made up the second ring of Burgess's concentric ring model. The model refers to this as a transition zone, meaning that the area contained industries as well as worker residences. The third ring of the model is made up of older houses that are made up of poor workers that would be close to the industrial jobs that they worked inside of the CBD. They are different from the housing in the transition zone because the residences in the transition zone would have consisted mainly of apartments that existed along some of the industry. The fourth ring of the Burgess concentric zone model is known as the zone of better residences and these are upper middle class houses that exist in the areas of the city known as the suburbs. The people living in this ring would be able to afford to live a little further away from the city center because they could afford the, the transportation and wanted to live a little further away from the chaos and the pollution of the city. Bid rent is cheaper the further from the CBD you get and so there is more available land that can support larger estates, which was also enticing to these people with higher income. These residents would be more like a bourgeoisie class, an upper middle class that was affiliated with running the industries and services in the city center, not the workers themselves. Finally, the fifth zone would be more spread out, like smaller, almost rural communities, where people would commute to the CBD to work. It's important to note that like any model, there are gonna be limitations and criticism to this one. First, the model completely ignores topography. That is, the physical characteristic of the land. So, Burgess's model won't explain how mountains, rivers, or bodies of water affect the expansion of the city. Secondly, it only focuses on the economic motivations for living in each sector and nothing more. There are many other reasons why someone would want to live in or stay put in a certain area despite their socioeconomic status. Finally, one of the critical limitations of the model is that it is really, really old. In 1925, cars weren't nearly as prevalent as they are now. This model, therefore, doesn't take into account the impact that cars had on people getting from one place to another. This is probably the single biggest flaw in the model, at least if you're using it to explain expansion of cities in 2017, which I hope that you aren't. So there's your explanation for Burgess's concentric zone model. This is only one of several models that seek to explain why we use urban space the way we do. Be sure to look out for my explanation of the others. Keep it real, students. See you next time with Professor Destin. Thanks for watching.